Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I'd like to give you an overview of Module 5, Advanced Mechanics, and the second inquiry question, which deals with circular motion. Now, I am not going to give you a full detailed description of everything that's involved in Module 5. It's meant to be an overview so that you can highlight some of the key points that you need to remember and also some tips in terms of how to succeed in any future exam. I have lots of videos that go into each of the concepts at a greater detail, so I encourage you to have a look at those and you can find them on my website or on YouTube, of course. A quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now let's get started. Now module 5 is broken down into three distinct inquiry questions. Now the first inquiry question that you're going to be looking at is how are models that are used to explain projectile motion be used to analyze and make predictions? Now I'm going to simplify it by simply writing projectile motion. Obviously, if I write the full inquiry question, I'm running out of space. The second inquiry question says, why do objects move in circles? And the final inquiry question states, how does the force of gravity determine the motion of planets and satellites? And I'm going to simplify it by just simply writing gravity. Now, when we look at circular motion, the first thing you need to know is how it's defined. And of course, it is defined by a force that is always perpendicular to the motion or the velocity of a particle. And so therefore, what we end up getting is a force acting towards the center of a circle, and we call that centripetal force. Now, in our analysis of circular motion, appreciate that we only get circular motion if the magnitude of that force remains constant. If it changes, then we are not going to get a circular motion. So we're interested in uniform circular motion. So the other aspect too is that we are not an analyzing objects that are speeding up in terms of its circular motion. We're dealing with a constant speed as it undergoes circular motion. Now the next aspect in the syllabus is looking at a number of examples. Now there are many examples used such as pulling a object spinning it around your head. Another example would be an object that is spinning like the graviton or the rotor that is in Sydney. And again, those cases are clearly where you have a force acting in towards the center. Now the syllabus does though refer to three specific examples that you need to analyze and they actually have some extra complexity to them. The first is the car on the track. And what that means is a car undergoing a circular path on a track will experience a force inwards, which is provided by the friction on the road. And so you need to analyze circular motion in terms of the inclusion of the friction acting in towards the center of that path. The second example is a conical pendulum. And there you have an object spinning in a circular path, but the conical pendulum is such that if you have an object spinning, it spins around in a circle like this. And so now we have two forces being applied to that. And that is of course the force of gravity pulling it down and the tension which results, the net force is the centripetal force. And the third example we need to look at is what we call a banked curve. Now this ties in with our car on the track, but now where we have a car sitting, let's say on a banked curve, therefore we have a force applying the normal force acting in that direction. We have the gravity in acts that direction and the resultant is a force in towards a circle. Again, what we have is centripetal forces being applied. And as a result, when you analyze that situation, you can actually work out the velocity required for any particular angle, whether the angle's in here or the angle is here. Again, I encourage you to have a look at my videos on banked curves, for example, for greater analysis of that. We next need to look at the analysis of it. And what I mean by that is understanding the mathematical models that we use to describe circular motion. There, of course, there is already the centripetal force situation, but then there's also the inclusion of the fact that the velocity is the circumference divided by the period, for example, and also the fact that if we look at the rate of change of angle, we now have a new terminology that we use, and this is called the angular velocity. So rather than talking about the velocity in linear terms in meters per second, we talk about using the idea of the angle, and the angle of course is in radians. And so what we have is the concept of angular displacement and angular velocity. Now that leads us finally onto the cause. Remembering, 
the question asked in the inquiry question is, why do things move in circles? And there are two key aspects that we examine in the syllabus. The first aspect is energy. When an object undergoes circular motion, what can we tell about the energy transformations that are taking place? So for example, if my pendulum is spinning at a particular angular velocity and it spins faster, well, it's going to increase in gravitational energy. It's also going to increase in kinetic energy. So how does that all work? And there's a pun for you if you're paying attention. The other aspect is torque. And torque is the concept of a force applied to cause an object to accelerate in a circular motion. It's often referred to as the turning force. And so you need to come an understanding as a mathematical analysis of torque. Though you're not asked to work out, let's say, the connection between torque and angular acceleration. Now, what's my one tip? Well, my one tip is diagrams and forces. When you're given an example with circular motion, understand that you're applying Newton's laws of motion. So label the forces that are acting in the situation and the centripetal force is usually the sum total of those forces, which then allows you to do a mathematical analysis, whether it's vectorially or by components, to work out what the centripetal force is. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.